Actually, Stefan, I'd be interested in your view on uh, the differences between gold and crypto mining since you actually have more experience than I do uh, in the extractive industries and you, know, you are an executive at New York Stock Exchange listed gold miner. What do you think are the differences here? How, how, do you, how have you approached this thing? When, well, I think the, uh, you know, you talked about exploration and that's an important point. You know, a lot of, there's essentially two phases in, in mining. You know, first you need to find the ore body. That's often the most difficult part. You know, only probably one in 5,000 prospects ever become an actual ore body. Um, in mining, a lot of the value that's created actually occurs before any goal is brought out of the ground. Right? I think that's an important distinction because it, that part of the, the success of exploration creates the capital, forms the capital that allows mining to persist. Um, the next phase, of course, is, is you know, getting through the regulatory hurdles and actually raising the capital necessary for this very, very capital intensive business of, of gold mining. Um, and I think that those distinctions and the, and the geographic randomness of, of gold deposits globally, um, you know, really gives it a very decentralized look relative to, you know, however many crypto miners are, are and, and also a natural meritocracy. So, so what's the equivalent in cryptocurrency mining of a high-grade mine, uh, a high-grade gold mine or a discovery? There, there is no, I mean, the, the best you can do in crypto is just having lower cost, you know, electricity locating in, you know, Iceland or Quebec where you have subsidized power. Um, Which is once again taking away from from the society's resources. Exactly. I mean, you know, the all of that electricity could be you know put into other productive uses, right? So people have determined that this is um, you know the best use case for that for that power. Or, or what's the equivalent in gold mining? Uh, what is it? Thirty, forty percent of gold mining is still done artisanally by hand. I think that's important because in a lot of uh, you know a lot of countries that perhaps don't have the, the strong fiat currencies that you know exist in the United States and Canada and Europe, um, you know their way of turning their uh, you know incremental effort and toil into savings and wealth is through gold mining, um, and probably thirty or forty percent is is still mined artisanally. And of course, you know there's a contrast there because it's not you know that's not something that's accessible. You know uh, somebody with no capital in, uh, you know, in a poor country cannot go and start, you know, a crypto mining business. That's just not going to happen. And as we know, they wouldn't even have a return. So for example, because what we come down to is a return on your metabolic energy. So, you know, I own some gold deposits. Uh, I can think of one that I own in Nevada that has a grade of around eight or nine grams. It's a vein system, a quartz system. You know, you could, you and I could go out, get a tent, get a pickaxe and shovel, go down to the tunnels, find the vein and sit there for a week. And I mean, it would be a profitable endeavor. We'd eat some food and we'd get some gold out and we could sell the gold or, you know, to someone that needs to use it for something. And there would be our uh, meritocracy, you know, toil. There is no equivalent like that with Bitcoin. You can't just, you can't just eat food and negotiate with nature and get Bitcoin out of the ground. With Bitcoin, what people are doing is essentially building computers that have to run 24-7 in the hopes that they win a puzzle. And the bigger com the computer they build, with the more power they invest, the more likely they are to win a puzzle. But once the puzzle is won and the coin is sold into the market, the owner of the coin depends on the continued mining of that miner. And so the proof of work that was expended by the miner, the historic metabolic energy, because there's certainly a lot of metabolic energy going into the production of Bitcoin historically. It's not bound to the coin that I'm holding at Coinbase or in my cold wallet. The only thing binding the abstraction to the proof of work is the miner's continued insistence to perpetuate the network into the future. It's, it's the most fundamental difference. And I really implore anyone that's watching this interview that's from the digital technology service economy that hasn't experienced the real natural world, the primary industries, to meditate on what we're saying here. Because this is ultimately where I think there's a gulf. The, the, the difference here is that you don't own something that depends on the laws of physics for it to continue to be the same thing, like gold. And, and you know, at this point you'll often get um, some of this crazy talk like, well, what about asteroid mining? Or what about if we discover fusion? And 
when they bring these nonsensical scientific theories up, they will only focus on what would happen to gold, not realizing that if you, for example, have a deus ex machina source of energy, everything else would become cheaper, including, for example, doing a 51% attack in the hashing algorithm. So everything is, is, is naturally scarce based on those Legos, those, those elements, but that relationship between the elements is fixed through time. And this is, for example, why all these myths about hoarding under a gold standard are false. This is why, for example, deflation under a gold standard is good in the Austrian tradition, where I totally agree with that. But ultimately, what we're talking about here, uh, when Barry says things like that, uh, when Bitcoin proponents talk about um, there's no difference between gold and Bitcoin. And in fact, if you're going to calculate the cost of mining Bitcoin, why don't you calculate all the costs of mining gold, storing gold, transferring gold? No, 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 no. There's a philosophical difference here that you have to appreciate. The gold is mined once, it lasts forever, its blockchain are the laws of physics. And if you want to get into these non sequiturs, suspension of laws of physics, asteroid mining, well, everything would change. I, I assure you gold would still do the best in that equation because of its natural attributes.